Hey, what is up everyone? It is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2 and welcome back to your MySQL tutorial series. Now this is video number 23 in the series and starting with this video we are doing a competition between MySQL, SQL Server, and Oracle to see which one you guys like the most. So the winner is going to get 50 extra videos in the series. So if you're liking MySQL the most, be sure to click like and watch the rest of the series. In addition to watching the rest of the series, it's very important that you go back and watch the beginning of the series. Now I know the content is so last year, but everything from video 1 to 22 is foundational to the rest of this series. Once you got that down, it's time to move on to data types. What? <laughs> I don't even know what I said there. I was like, what? Mixed with woot? I don't know. Data types is an extremely important topic when we're talking about creating databases. That's because every single piece of information we store in a database has to have a data type. So when we create a table, we have to give the columns right here and let's say we say food ID. This is not enough for the table. Following the column name, we have to put the data type of the data that's going to be stored inside of this column. So think of us having a table. One of the columns is food ID. Every single value for this column, every single row, is going to have to have data of a certain data type. What is the benefit of this though? Well, if the database has all of the same type of data for a column, it's able to work with that data faster, it's able to optimize storage, and it's able to restrict incorrect data, you know, data that doesn't fit that data type. But I might be jumping ahead. Did we really figure out what a data type is? A data type Put simply, is the type of data. <laughs> I know that totally wasn't helpful, but think of the type of data. And we can categorize the types into three main categories. These are like the three categories we start with, and then later hopefully we'll learn some more. The three categories include numeric, string, and temporal. Now within each of these categories, there are specific data types that we are going to learn about. But if we're just talking about categories, what determines a numeric data type? Well, it's actually anything dealing with numbers. And generally, these are numbers that we can quantize. Quantize? I don't remember the word. But <laughs> any number that has actual numeric meaning. So for example, this column here has numeric meaning because we are going to be storing an ID here. But if we had a phone number, which I know doesn't really go well with a food table, but let's just say, well, those numbers don't actually have numeric meaning. Essentially, the important thing to know is that numeric data types deal with numbers. So think salaries, IDs, prices, discounts, ETC, you know? Moving on to string data. This is anything within quotes. So think of like something like this. This is a string. Now in databases, it's generally approved that we want to use single quotes for strings. Now, each one of these is known as a character. So there's five characters, H-E-L-L-O. And other characters would include numbers. Yeah, you can actually store numbers in a string. So you could say that strings are alphanumeric, meaning alpha for alphabet and numeric for numbers. But the database interprets that data differently because we say it is of type string. Other data that you could put in quotes include symbols. You can put spaces, new line characters, and even symbols from different languages. And lastly, we have the temporal data type. This is anything dealing with dates and time. So if you think you want to store a date or the time that something was done, you will want to use a data type that is of the temporal category. And as always, the categories kind of just help us out, but we don't actually have to tell the database what category we are using. For example, in this create table, if we put something here, such as int, that's enough for the database. We don't have to say int numeric or something. It's, it's redundant because that's all the database is going to need to know how to treat this column. Now one last thing with data types is to consider storage. So certain, Onyx bless you, 
So with storage, certain data types allow us to change how much data we can store in that column. And the general rule is that you want to store the minimum that is enough to store what we need. For example, if we know that we are going to store only maybe 20 rows in this ID column, there would be no benefit of grabbing the largest numeric data type. The same thing goes with strings. If we know we are going to be storing strings that are never longer than 15 characters, for example, let's say we're storing phone numbers, there's no need to make a string data type that is like stinking huge, okay? Just keep it to the smallest that is needed and no extra. If you're unsure though, be sure to go on the larger size because it would be better to be on that side than to be too small and have to go and change things. Overall, that's a pretty rough introduction to data types. <laughs> Hopefully in the next upcoming videos, you will learn more data types in more depth and that will allow us to create our tables really super good. <laughs> See you guys. No, oh, dang it. Oh, look at it. So yeah, guys, see you in the next video. And as always, please sure to click like and subscribe. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. See you then.